Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, like the presence of God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. There is something that the life of God gives to us that cannot be found anywhere. Now, what is the value of the presence of God? The life of God. Zoe. The value of that life is matchless. You, you, you cannot put a price to it. It is the blood of Jesus that has purchased us and that has given us access and that inheritance, that divine inheritance. Otherwise, what the presence of God, the life of God does to us or gives to us cannot be found anywhere, not in any hospital, not in any school, not in any institution, not in any nation. Dubai cannot give it to you. The U.S. cannot give it to you. Hallelujah. We talk about the life of God, the quality of that life. Hallelujah. There is nowhere, there is nowhere you can go and access the things that are given to you or that are, are yours of the quality of the, that are found in the life of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the world is waking up to that. Because the remnants of God are mozillas. Hallelujah. To tap into what is theirs, what is uniquely theirs by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. You know the time has come when people will no longer say he went to Harvard, she went to Oxford. They will say they accessed so well. The life of God! Hallelujah! That is the value, the quality of that life. It cannot be matched by anything in this world, anywhere in this world. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. And if we understood it, and took it so seriously. The manifestations that we would begin having. Would create such a curiosity all over the world. You see. The thing is we are not religious. We are the offsprings of God Almighty. We are partakers of his divine nature. And because of us, the things that make us different are from him. You can't find them anywhere. Anywhere in the world. Hallelujah. You know, he said, I have come that you might have life. He said, I have come that you might have life. Now, in other words, God wants to give you a life. He doesn't want to diminish your life. He wants to give you a life, a quality of life. He said, I have come, hallelujah, that you might have life. Hallelujah. There are people whom you observe, whom you see, and you admire. 
Because you see in them something that is admirable. A life of quality. <laughs> Glory to God. The life that is offered on this earthly plane is deceptive. Let me tell you, I have met quite a few of people whom, uh, if seen from afar, might appear like they, they have a, a, a life of quality. But when you are, when you observe them, and you're close to them, you realize that what they have are things that are fleeting. They do not have something that is of true value, that cannot be snatched or taken away by any earthly factor. And so what they have are things that are on the surface might appear worthwhile. But when you meet Someone that has the way, the life of God, and it's in manifestation. Whatever you see in manifestation from the life of God, you will surely see something of quality, of value, something that is truly admirable, something that you, you, you will know that you want. Because it's not deceptive, because it's eternal, because it's established, because it does not take toil and labor. Hallelujah. Because it can make you access anything from anywhere. You don't have to be in a place where your uncle is, your aunt is. No, 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 no. Anywhere you are, that quality will be with you. Now we're talking about the God of heaven and earth. The earth and its fullness belonging to him. Now there are some people when they're out of Uganda. <laughs> they cease to be of importance. Their life depreciates. When you have Zoe. Hallelujah. It doesn't depend on anything earthly. No earthly connections can give it to you. I'm telling you. He says, I've come to give you that. To give you a life. Hallelujah. He says, I have come. Some people think that Jesus came to introduce a religion. Hallelujah. He said the reason why he came was to give you a certain kind of life. A quality of life. I've come to give you a life. You know, people sleep. And they wake up and they're worried and they're oppressed and they're in bondage and they're in fear and they're in darkness. And then all of a sudden, he comes to you and he says, I have come that you might start living. Then you wake up and everything starts fading away. All the darkness and failure and fears, they just become merely shadows. Because you can see clearly now. Hallelujah. And now you're no longer afraid of anything. Hallelujah. I have come that you might have life he says, and that you might have it more abundantly. Not here and there. That it might overflow. Hallelujah. An overflowing life. Now you know when you have this life, it comes with manifestations. And those manifestations are the indications of that life. Hallelujah. Now, in other words, you, do, you no longer have just enough of things. You have more than enough of things. You know, 
I'm telling you. When you examine this life, it doesn't give you enough, just enough. And that is what the way is all about. Whenever it has its way around you or about you, be ready for an overflow of whatever you're touching, whatever you're pursuing. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Now, when I see all of you, I do not see anyone that falls short of what the Spirit of God is saying today. You are a person of overflow. You are a candidate of overflow. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, where everything about you, all your pursuits, is not just enough. For starters, okay, let's say, let's give you a life. <laughs> where now you are sorted, you are settled. And there comes. Now the true manifestation of it. It says, okay, oh, now that you've started experiencing it. Now that it's working in you and through you. Now watch and see. Wait and see. Because you're in for things that are going to mess you up. Let me tell you. You will not be able to contain what that life is doing to you. You can't contain it. Hallelujah. So be ready for increase. Be ready for expansion. Be ready to be taken on another level and another level. That is how the life of God works. And you are in contact with it. You are in fellowship with it. He says, I have come for that purpose that you might have life. Hallelujah. So now in other words, God is on your side. Hallelujah. He is not your problem. Do not be your own problem. Hallelujah. 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 I'm saying, make sure that your mind is not your problem. Because God is not. Eh? He is for you in all your pursuits, in all your desires. He is for you. Do not be your own problem. Because you're the greatest problem that can ever happen to you. It's not the devil. Hallelujah. You need to subject yourself to the devil for him to work in your life. Now, in other words, it all boils down to which side you are taking. It is you. You are a sovereign being. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So your increase has started. Hallelujah. And do not let yourself come in the way of it. Hallelujah. It says, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. More abundantly. Some people believe in enough. I don't know what's wrong with some of these Christians these days. I don't know what's wrong with that. For me, if I just have one car, I just have one house, I want to, it's okay, we should make. Now, the only problem is, the only problem is you're dealing with a God who, is not, who doesn't just settle for that. You think when God gives you a car, he has really, really spent? <laughs> And then he says, now, eh? you don't know how much I went into my pocket. Hallelujah. 
glory to God. So we're dealing with this life, with this grace, with this glory. And that is why the Holy Spirit says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? This is too much that has been availed to us and for us. But it says that it is possible for one to neglect so great a salvation. Hallelujah. It says it is possible for one to neglect so great, what he describes as so great a salvation. You ask as great as what? As great as making you someone that a nation cannot contain. That's what he did to Abraham. Abraham was an example. And wherever he went, nations trembled. They could not contain him. Economy started fidgeting. But he says it is possible to have so great a salvation and yet neglect it. And then settle for what is understandable. Settle for what is, uh, you know, what can only be figured out, what can only relate to your physical and natural resources. It says it's possible for you to look at yourself and say, I have this amount of money in the bank, or I do not have it at all. You know, eh? I have this education, I do not have it at all. I have this person here, I, I do not have them at all. And then you neglect because you're observing other areas of resource. And you have neglected what he says, so great, what he calls so great a salvation, so great a salvation, one that is able to bless you out of your socks. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. The Apostle Paul told Timothy, he told him, neglect not, neglect not, the gift of God, which is in thee. It says, which was given to you by the laying on of hands, you know, of the presbytery. It says, neglect not the gift of God, which is in thee. And was given to you by prophecy. It says, neglect not the gift. Now, in other words, it is very possible to have a divine ability given to you by prophecy. But then you neglect it. Then you live like you don't actually have it and you depend upon natural resources. But there's a divine resource that can show up and that you can tap into, that can make you different, that can turn your life around. But what are you depending on? Natural resources. Hallelujah. So, what kind of life? What kind of life are you going to pursue? Now, you see, because a choice has got to be made. Because many people, many people determine their fate, their future. They gauge themselves based on what they are physically, their resource physically, and then they neglect something. They neglect something that has been given to them that is divine. And says it's, it's possible. And Paul, the apostle, was cautioning his spiritual son, Timothy, and told him, you remember a time when we prophesied over you and there was an ability that was released upon you, a divine gift? It says, do not neglect it. Do not neglect it. Do you know how many of you here 
How many of you here have the prophetic gift imparted inside of them and you never prophesy at all? Never. You don't even think you can prophesy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now that gift, that gift can be anything. Peter the Apostle says, according as his divine power has given to us all things pertaining to life and godliness. Hallelujah. It says his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us. It says through the knowledge of him through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Verse 4. It says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. It says, These has, have already been given to us. That by this, it says, You might not merely be human. That you might begin to operate as a trans-dimensional being. The divine nature. How many times do we come to the end of ourselves? Because all that we are seeing and dependent upon are human. And he says that we may be partakers of the divine nature. You know what that makes you? That makes you a trans-dimensional being. Now, in other words, you operate on different levels. People can find you now on your earthly plane and then they find you later on and you have tapped into something, an operation that is higher than human. Then all of a sudden you begin firing and appointing people. Things that are impossible on a human plane. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you see now, we hardly explore that. We hardly explore that because again, we have looked at ourselves and we know where we start and we know where we come to an end. How about exploring the beyond? It says neglect not the gift of God. It's a gift, it has been given. It has given to us all things pertaining to life and godliness. He has given to us that divine nature. Hallelujah. That makes you more than human. Now, in other words, if you want to die, you die. If you want to live, you live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ah, ah, you guys, man. Eh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Why do you think whatever happens will just knock you off just like that? There's something that you can tap into and it sustains you. I'm telling you. I told you how years ago, Years ago, I would walk distances. <laughs> if you don't have transport, you have the divine nature. And I didn't have transport. Eh? But I had the divine nature. And I would go distances, no food, no getting tired. Hallelujah. Because that divine nature, I knew it. I over-depended on it until it took over every bit of me and somehow, now the human side, I had to work my way back to become human again. And it took some time. I'm telling you, I would go days without eating, without sleeping, and I'm fine. Some of you just one meal. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
you've taken breakfast, you already think about lunch. In the process of taking breakfast, eh? what are we going to eat for lunch? <laughs> So I know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what I'm talking about. I know that you can go so far into the divine and it disrupts everything human this side until you start now learning how to align things properly. And that's what God told me. Where you do not have to, to totally like disalign yourself from the earthly because you're transdimensional. You're earthly and you're heavenly as well. Hallelujah. So now in other words, everything is operating properly. But as it should have operated before the fall. In other words, you're not subject to physical and natural elements. You can eat food and enjoy it, but not because you're so hungry, you, are, you, you, you guys are starving. Starving? Starving is... <laughs> That word starving is not right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so a time comes when you wake up and you understand that I'm either going to go this way or I'm going to remain operating completely as a human. But then, there you are neglecting something says, neglect not the gift of God which is you. says, how shall we escape if we neglect, if we neglect so great a salvation, so great, so great that it has such an ability to make you operate as a divine being, to cause you to access other realms. Hallelujah. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that had him? Now, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, how shall we escape if we neglect? So there are things that you can neglect. There are things that can be availed to you and you choose to neglect them. But then there are those who say, no, 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 no. You said what? Say, this is my life. This here is my life. I am not going to neglect. This is my life. You get focused on it. You take it as your own. You explore it. You delve into it. You cultivate it. Hallelujah. Because you see, Hallelujah. You've got to first understand it. You've got to know it, then understand it. And then, Cultivate it. Because everything that is spiritual requires you to cultivate it. Explore it more. Then cultivate it. Then cultivate it. In other words, work with it. Don't live like it does. It's not a part of your life. Work with it. Some people live and all they think that they have are documents. My God. How about a document from above? Hallelujah. <laughs> Now, I'm telling you, that is the life. You know, that is what the angel says. Go and share with your brethren the words, what he calls the words of this life. That life is different from what they know. He says now, but go and tell them the words of this life. It will create things. It will manifest things that will buffer the world. I'm telling you. It's good to have Harvard graduates as remnants. But then again, if you have a Harvard graduate who is behaving as a Harvard student, as a Harvard graduate, not as an offspring of God, you are at a loss. We are at a loss. Because the ungodly, wicked, dark Harvard graduates as well, eh? who when the World Health Organization speaks, they will, they will listen. But imagine you have a Harvard graduate, a remnant. And then 
There is something in operation upon them that defies the wisdom of man. Hallelujah. That puts to naught the wisdom of man. And then they start asking, okay, now, you have something. Now that, that person becomes a witness of something higher. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, no wonder the Apostle Paul said, I commend you to God. He says, I now commend you to God and to the words of his grace. He says, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. Acts 20 verse 32 says, I commend you to God. Now, when some people want to advise, I'm talking about men of God. They will tell you now, I think your route should be Oxford University. It says, I commend you to God. And to the word of his grace. How, imagine what confidence that has been lost. Confidence in the word of God. Confidence in the knowledge of God. Now, what people commend others to are, are anything other than the word of God, the revelation of God, the knowledge of God. They just give you advice. And now I think, <laughs> and that is in the church. Every other thing, every other thing becomes secondary. It's not unnecessary, but it becomes like the stick of Moses. You remember the rod of Moses? It's not the thing. Your Harvard qualification is like, can be used as that rod of Moses. But we knew that the wonders behind that rod was the hand of God. And that is what many people forget. And I pray no remnant enters that kind of deception. There's something that is in operation in our midst that is higher than anything you can find in the earthly realm. Higher than anything. Where the wisdom of man comes to an end. You haven't yet even started the wisdom of God there. And then you have the power of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He says, I commend you. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. He says, which is able, has that ability to build you up. How many people have confidence in that? That now that I have the word of his grace, my life is so dead, so dead, so dead. Hallelujah. 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 You can imagine. You can imagine knowing that. That you have the word of his grace. And therefore, your reference point is nowhere else but there. Nowhere else but there, says the word of his grace. Says, which is able to build you up. You're headed for an interview, ah, the word of his grace. You're going to present your documents, the word of his grace. You're going for a death, the word of his grace. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, it will confuse someone, eh? <laughs> and then people will look from afar and they say, surely this, there's no matching here. This must be grace here. <laughs> and it's when you walk and you see couples around you, you know this is grace. And I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm telling you, there's nothing. There's nothing. It may appear casual to some. It may appear trivial to others. But the word of his grace works everywhere. Everywhere. Whatever life that you need. Whatever thing that you need to be a part of your life. To build you up. It works. 
Hallelujah. So when you're here, you have access to something that is building your life, building the quality of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Now, in other words, there's an inheritance. There's some things that are inherited in the spirit and you inherit them as well. Hallelujah. You're not excluded from that inheritance. Whatever his divine power has given someone else and you can see it and testify about it, it gives it to you as well, that inheritance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's why again the Holy Ghost asks, how shall we escape if we neglect so great? He says, there's too much. There's too much about this salvation. Too much that can be neglected. And that has been neglected for such a long time. And there has been reliance upon anything else other than that salvation, other than the word of his grace. Hallelujah. We have relied upon all other things. All other things. And neglected so great a salvation. Now that gives you a testimony. This one gives you a testimony. The Apostle Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He says, for in it, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God, he says, unto salvation. He says, there's power. It comes with power. And to salvation, what do you call salvation? It says, to everyone that believeth. It says, to the believer, they will discover a power that will liberate them from any earthly bondages and limitations. Hallelujah. To everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Verse 17. It says, for in this gospel, for therein, it says, is the righteousness of God revealed. It says, there's a revelation of what he calls the righteousness of God. Now, in other words, hallelujah. It says, a veil. It swings open a veil. And you begin to see Things in another dimension that relates to you and with you. And in that dimension, that dimension of God is called the righteousness of God. Now, in other words, it's according to God's order of things. Not man's fallen order or the devil's order. That's what we call the righteousness of God. God's order of things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You remember, it says, for it is a righteous thing for God to pay with tribulation them that trouble you. It says, seeing it is a righteous thing with God. To recompense tribulation to them that trouble, he says it's righteous. Now, let me tell you what is unrighteous. For someone to trouble you and they get away with it. Now, you see how we cannot neglect so great a salvation? Where whoever touches you, they cannot get away with it. Now, that is the righteousness of God. Now, there are people. <laughs> there are people in boarding schools. Some fellows who had things tied around them. <laughs> Whom when kids 
wanted to touch. Hallelujah. They knew you don't tamper with that person. Because you don't, you can't get away with it. They had something that was spiritual. It was satanic but spiritual. And because of that, you, you just couldn't get away with anything. And people knew it. How much more? So great a salvation among God's own. I'm talking about God's own. You. you God's own. And you think you're just allowing someone to touch you. And okay, yeah. Let me tell you. There's not a single person who touches you and they get away with it. Now, when some people hear this and they don't understand, they're talking about Christians who are in a kindergarten school of Christianity. Turn the other cheek. Turn the Hallelujah. To recompense with tribulation. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. Judgments upon judgments. I'm telling you. Now let me tell you. It takes revelation. It says the righteousness of God is revealed. Now it has just been revealed to you. In other words, you begin to see that no one can get away with it. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, and here I announce, whoever has ever touched us in any way, whether they knew it or did not know it, tribulation upon them, hallelujah. Now you're going to see. Now you're going to see. Now you are seeing, hallelujah. Glory to God. No one is safe. No one is safe. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. He says it is the righteous thing. It's not wicked. It is not hatred. It's a righteous thing. Hallelujah. If God is okay with it, why shouldn't I be okay with it? Hallelujah. And I will laugh like God laughs at them. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I will not feel sorry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the wicked perish. Hallelujah. There are shouts of joy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I'm telling you. Neglect not that. It has already worked now. It will continue to work. It will continue to work, I say, from today. That grace is upon you. And it will continue to work. And people will see it. And you will develop that reputation about you. I'm telling you. Now be conscious of it. Constantly be conscious of it. And then see. Just watch and see. Just watch and see what happens to the wicked. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. 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 So he says, for therein is the righteousness of God. He says, revealed you begin to see things that are surely right with God about you. 
Hallelujah. You see something happening to you and say, no, 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 no. This is not the righteousness of God. Things ought not to be like this. I ought not to be hounded. This is not the righteousness of God. He says, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed. You begin to see and know what should be your kind of life and what should not be. You know, some people think that the righteous life is stopping to watch movies. <laughs> and their life is a movie in itself. It's a drama, it's a thriller. <laughs> and they are watching it right before them. And by the way, there's is even a true life drama. Eh? <laughs> I, you know, not so many people have tapped into under, the understanding of what, what is truly righteous. And their spirit knows it and it's unveiled to them and they are connected with it and they are in operation. They are in that level of operation of righteousness. Where you see and no, 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 no. Hallelujah. Everything after the fall is unrighteous. Whatever was pronounced, whatever experiences came up about of toiling and, you know, and getting little and thorns in the ground and sweat and all of it, that's unrighteous. But then there's something where you now begin to wake up and you say, no, 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 no. For it is a righteous thing, this one here. This is not a righteous thing. It, it, it is not. It's not a part of me, therefore. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. He says, I am. So I do not tolerate anything that's unrighteous. That is not consistent with God's righteousness. And so that's why I don't just move on. When I see something that's in contradiction to that righteousness, I have to go and check and find out what is happening here. How is it happening like this? I don't take it as something that is normal and okay, let's move on. No, 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 no. No moving on. Until I make a discovery of why that abnormal thing is happening, I do not put it to rest. Because you see, when I put it to rest, before I make that discovery, then I'm neglecting so great a salvation. Hallelujah. It says, for therein is the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God revealed. How many things you look through your life? Say, no, this is it's surely not righteous. Me having 50k in my account is not righteous. Hallelujah. It's not. Me wanting to spend my holidays somewhere. And I can't because I'm limited. It is not righteous. It is not. Me having this kind of husband. Eh? <laughs> I'm joking. So relax. Right. Joking and not joking at the same time. <laughs> okay. The things that are not righteous, that you will see and know. That are not consistent with the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. For therein is the righteousness of God. It says, revealed from faith to faith. Now, in other words, from level to level, according as to how, your eyes are seeing the invisible that is yet to manifest. But if you can see that invisible, then it will manifest. And then you see another, you begin to see from another horizon. Then it manifests on that horizon. You see from another horizon. Then your boundaries are pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. And there's no limit to how far 
they are expanded based on how your eyes have seen the invisible. In other words, if you see them being recompensed, being paid with tribulation, then they are being paid with tribulation. If you see their whole area burn up and collapse, then it is. Well, if you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, the operation, the operation of this great salvation is mystical, but so real, so true. It is, it is ignited by sight. Hallelujah. It is triggered by sight. Faith is sight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says from faith to faith. Hallelujah. From faith to faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I'm telling you, here is where you start operating transdimensionally. There are things that you're putting to work and people are seeing you in the earthly sphere. And then there are things that you're observing and operating by sight from another dimension and you're seeing them take a certain course. And then you begin manipulating them from that invisible realm by sight, by what you're seeing about them. Happening now at Zoe Grounds every Tuesday, 5.30 p.m. at Plot 47, Chigolweza, Kampala, Uganda, along the Entebbe Express Highway. For those flying in, contact our public relations desk by emailing PR at ProfitElvis.com